Real Estate Investment Trusts, also known as REITs, is now a part of the local real estate ecosystem following the gazettement of REITs regulations. REITs is basically a structured and regulated platform on which investors can raise funds for real estate development. And traditionally we have seen that banks would lend up to 70% of the project cost, so the developer has to raise the 30%. Now a lot of landowners, the potential developers, are not able to raise that uh, uh, 30%. Simply put, under the REITs platform, if you are a landowner who wants to raise capital to develop a piece of land through REITs, you basically set up a trust into which you invite investors to buy units or shares in the trust for a minimum of 5 million shillings per unit or share. This then allows you to raise the capital needed to develop your property without having to take out a loan or incur interest, ultimately reducing the high cost of borrowing associated with financial institutions. Development REIT, in which case the promoter is planning to build and sell. Then you have the other, which is an investment REIT, where the promoter is um, putting in a property or developing a property for rental purposes. Demand for REIT is expected to be strongest in Nairobi before heading to regional markets, with further interest expected to be generated by institutional housing projects, commercial developments and retail centres for county headquarters. Building owners can also use REITs to gain equity by placing a portion of their building on the REITs market. I think the other comfort that also REITs bring is the legislation and structure put around it, which gives um, investors the comfort that they're professionals managing the whole process. All eyes are now set on the fate of capital gains tax, which if introduced will significantly impact on the earnings of the sector, a factor that may reduce its attractiveness to both developers and investors. Michelle Morgan reporting for Citizen Business.